Hi, I'm Maitri and I'm a Radiation Oncology Physician Assistant. Um, I'm a McMaster Physician Assistant Program graduate from class of 2014. It's quite different when a student is starting up with elective as their first rotation because their expectations are to build skills that will help them for the rest of their clerkship year, um, as opposed to somebody who is ending their year with uh, an elective because they're hoping to develop skills that will help them with employment. A lot of these skills are transferable, so some of the soft skills that I um, that I focus on that are transferable are communication, team building, uh, your building report with other individuals of the healthcare team. But there are some skills such as history taking, physical exams, dictation. If you've never done something like that before to an extensive capacity, you want to learn that right off the bat. And I usually find that my expectations of PE students are different when they're starting a rotation with me versus when they're finishing a rotation. Um, of course, when you're finishing a rotation with me, I expect that you know within a month or two, you're going to graduate. In a couple of months, you're going to look for employment. So I expect you to work pretty independently. I remove myself um, as much as I can as your preceptor and allow you to do things from beginning to end, just as I would expect a PA to do. But when you're starting off with an elective, I'm there to provide a little bit extra help because I understand that you're just starting off with the concept of rotations and um, it just takes that extra step to get used to the 8 to 5 or 9 to 5 day, which is quite different than being in school, which most people have done for the, for the majority of their life. And in your opinion, what does a student need to excel in a radiation oncology elective? I find that individuals who've come uh, in radiation oncology with an open mind tend to do their best. There are individuals who come in with expectations of just learning about common malignancies such as breast, GU, colorectal, and lung cancer, and I find that they're disappointed when I get them to see rare malignancies or uh, when I get them to work up diagnoses that they might not have thought about. On the contrary, if they're expecting to see a lot of cool cases, um, and you know, cool in oncology could mean something that we're never going to see again, or something that happens to one in a million individuals, but they only get to see bread and butter, run of the mill, common malignancies, they might get dis disappointed. And of course, we don't have control over what comes through the door and when it comes through the door. So I tell individuals to come in with an open mind. I also tell individuals to come in with set objectives because it's easier as a preceptor if I know what you want to get um, out of this rotation at the end of your four weeks. If your primary goal is to be able to stage malignancies and, say, stay, and be excellent at staging tumors, that's what I'm going to focus on. If your primary goal is to be able to do physical exams such as nasolaryngoscopy or doing pelvic exams for gynae malignancy patients, I'm going to try to put you in more head and neck clinics or gynae malignancy clinics. Um, so it depends really what each individual's uh, learning objectives are. I do my very best to share these learning objectives with the physician preceptors. Uh, we're very good about communicating before the hand, before the student starts, so everybody's on the same page. And I try to make sure that the goals are met, so by the end of your rotation, you've accomplished everything, if not, um, and if not everything, mostly er most of what you wanted to do. What can students in clerkship do? now during rotations to help make them more employable or more competitive compared to their other uh, colleagues? One thing I recommend um, that everybody keep in mind is every rotation is a prolonged interview. Every single day that you come in, you are being assessed, you are being evaluated. And you, that, that goes um, for your demeanor, how you are speaking to the patients, how you speak to your colleagues, how you approach difficult scenarios how you approach with disappointments. Um, for instance, I've had students who've spent more than an hour, two hours prepping up a patient, but the patient became ill and never showed up to the appointment. I've had people get extremely disappointed and make comments such as, oh, well, there, th that was a waste of two hours. And that, to me, is very really disappointing because this individual ended up in ER not by choice. Of course, there's something happening. Um, as opposed to individuals who still use that as a learning experience and say, well, at least I got to learn about something and are willing to still discuss the case, whether or not they might be, um, they might be able to see that patient or not. 
So being open to different experiences that might happen, being open to learning opportunities that arise, being open to uh, uh, switching clinics if uh, the plan doesn't work out. For instance, during September, we have our Canadian and American Radiation Oncology Conferences. So a lot of the clinics are canceled, sometimes rescheduled, and we don't have the same kind of patient load. Some days are easier, and some days we're swamped with new consults. Um, so being flexible and allowing the flow of things to go as that's real life. Real life doesn't go according to plan. Most of my days aren't nine to five. And if you're a student in this rotation, most of your days aren't going to be nine to five. I appreciate students who take the initiative um, to want to work up the new patients that you're going to see. If you don't show me initiative, then I don't want to go that extra 10 steps to make sure you excel. You, students have to take the first step for me to take that step towards you. Um, if I get a feeling that you just want to do the bare minimum of seeing a follow-up patient, presenting, dictating, and leaving on time, then I understand that as your learning objective, and that's how I'll approach your rotation. And I feel like this extends to every rotation you go to. You want to show initiative, you want to ensure that you're putting in the extra effort that's required, because all you have are those four to six weeks to make a lasting impression. If that individual, that place, or the group of physicians is hiring down the line, all they have are those four weeks to judge you and assess you by. You could be an excellent individual out of outside of that, but it, they don't know about it. All they know are those four weeks. So make those the best possible four weeks. I understand PA school is hard. It's, it's tiresome. It's 12 months. It feels like it never ends. You miss family events, birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, funerals. Don't, you know, it seems like nobody cares about any of that. But fortunately or unfortunately, you just have these 12 months to make a mark. Um, how should they approach getting references uh, if they're looking at jobs? Should they be waiting until um, they're graduated? Or is this a proactive uh, process they can take now? Be proactive. If you've had a really good experience at a rotation that you potentially want to apply down the line, or you think that the experience has taught you something um, that you can use in future job employment opportunities, make sure you approach your primary preceptor at the end of the rotation and ask what the best way for you to get in touch with them um, is if, if you want them to be your reference. For instance, if you've done a rotation with me in winter and you haven't approached uh, me about you using this rotation as a reference, I might forget that. We have a lot of medical students, uh, elective medical students, residents, visiting fellows, PA students rotating through, and that happens at pretty much every academic institution you go to. They have a high turnover, and you can't expect everybody to remember you. Um, the best thing to do is ask them what their approach is. In the past, I have been comfortable with providing a reference within a week or two when things are still extremely fresh in my mind. I, I date it accordingly. If those individuals go for an employment opportunity and they want to use um, an updated reference, they will reach out to me again, but at least I have the original reference letter I wrote, which helps refresh some of the memories. I can go through the evaluations and then I can do a more updated reference. So my recommendation is if you have an extremely excellent experience and you want to hold on to that, ask them what the best method is. There might be some individuals who say, well, just shoot me an email with your name, your credentials, and your updated resume, and let me know if, if you need my reference by the end of the year. And th those individuals just like to do it later on or just do it once. Whatever your preceptor thinks is the best, uh, best idea. But let them know so it's on their radar. What can preceptors do to ensure their students get the most out of their rotation? So when you're a preceptor for a PA student, a medical student, or learners in any capacity, it is your moral obligation, I personally think, to make sure that they have an enriching experience. They're there for a short term, and they have a lot of learning objectives, a lot of questions to get through, and they may or may not get to revisit this ro particular rotation with you. Um, so you really have, just as the students have a short time to make an impression on you, you also have a really short time to reciprocate in that relationship and ensure that they're getting the 
maximum balance of uh, a good learning opportunity but also learning a little bit about the profession also getting to enjoy themselves a little bit um, and still leaving with enough enough of a skill set that will help them with the rest of their rotations or even their PA career as a whole. I find uh, one of the most beneficial things I do which I've had consistent feedback for is doing academic half days with my students. So every time I have a PA student I uh, dedicate Friday afternoon as academic half days out of the four weeks, for two of the weeks, we'll do a topic of my choice. Um, and for the other two weeks, I let the PA student choose the topic of their choice, which interests them. In the past, students have picked anywhere from, you know, interview skills or um, helping me prepare for the rest of my rotations, um, talking about, uh, you know, today we did a resume workshop with, uh, with a couple of the second year PA students. Uh, in the past, we've talked about health literacy, how PA students and PAs can develop patient education while being health literate. We've talked about tumor markers, we've talked about staging. So really, I like to keep it open so the students get the most possible learning out of this. Sometimes they have oncology-specific questions, and I'm more than happy to assist with that. Sometimes they have broader PA professional-related questions, and sometimes they have practice-related questions. So to be able to provide that extra learning opportunity for them gives them an opportunity to ask questions, which otherwise may just remain unanswered if you don't take that extra step. What about on busy clinic days? Is the student uh, case presenting every case to you, or do you take um, time between patients, or do you wait till after clinic to review? How does that interaction work? With most of the students, I try to ensure that they present directly to the staff physician because in real life, that's what a PA would do. Uh, you would not, as a PA, present to another PA unless you're part of a multidisciplinary team and you're presenting to a lot of uh, clinicians. So it's very rare that I get the student to present directly to me only, unless, of course, it's uh, indicated for the situation that's at hand. Um, sometimes in extremely busy clinics, we don't have the time to discuss after each case. But like uh, like most like most of my students have noticed, the physicians in the department are very well versed with being uh, in academia. They a lot of them have been practicing for twenty plus years, and they've taught hundreds of learners. Um, so they make sure they take the time even in an extremely busy clinic, to ensure that you've had the at least 30 seconds to ask one burning question about that case and maybe reserving some of the more detailed case, uh, detailed case questions to after the clinic or during our academic half days. How do you see that being beneficial, uh, having them go outside their comfort zone like that? Uh, whenever an opportunity arises, I think of it as, would you as a working PA do this? And if the answer is yes, my expectation is I will get you to do it. So I routinely present at tumor board uh, tumor boards, and with working in nine to ten different sites, I can't go to each tumor board. But if it's a patient I've personally seen, the physician, the automatic physician expectation it is that I will go and present the patient. Um, sometimes the physicians aren't even there, and I'm expected to present the case. And I try to extend the same uh, type of expectation onto my students. Of course, I wouldn't expect you to go in blindly without knowing how a tumor board would function in that particular scenario. So we go through the steps, how you would develop a brief history. What are the pertinent uh, points that you definitely need to present? What are the questions you need to ask? Why are you presenting this case to tumor board? And it also develops your case presentation skills to a much larger audience um, and allows you to really understand what multi multidisciplinary care is because more and more of medicine is heading towards that and PAs are going to be integral um, as part of that MDT. You're very, um, you're very proactive in terms of uh, helping guide students through a rotation, making sure they're meeting their learning objectives. What if, I don't know, there's bad luck and perhaps they don't get matched, students don't get matched, where uh, there's as much hands-on learning and one-on-one -on -one teaching. What can students do in that situation to advocate for themselves uh, to get the most out of that experience? In my experience, um, and this is going back to when I was a student um, and did my clerkship rotations in second year, I have almost never been turned down if I have gone up to a physician or a PA and I have said, 
I would like to do this or I would like to learn this. If they absolutely didn't think it was appropriate, they would take the time to explain why they thought it was inappropriate. But you know, 99% of the ch of the time, they would let me tag along. Um, for instance, when I did my gen storage rotation, the PAs who work there work Monday to Friday, six to two. They don't do calls. That's not part of their expectation. But I wanted to learn what kind of cases would come if if somebody were to be on call during surgery. I wanted to learn what happened after hours in OR. I wanted to be part of uh, hands-on care if the OR ran more than 12 hours, let's say. For the first week, I didn't realize that I could do that too, and all I did was arrive when the PA was arriving, did what I was told to do, and I would leave at 2. On paper, that sounds excellent because I had the rest of the day to do whatever I wanted to do, but I realized very quickly that I wasn't getting the best learning opportunity because they were doing all of their appendectomies and colitis cystectomies overnight. They just don't have the OR time to do that during the daytime. And starting second week, I realized all I had to do was ask my preceptor physician and I was hooked up with the right physicians, uh, the residents, fellows, and starting uh, starting uh, second week, I was the first assist for appies and colies. I started to do discharge summaries and it really changed my perspective and made my entire experience so much better than just being a little fly on the wall. So what's the balance between showing up when you're supposed to and then taking extra initiative to stay longer perhaps, but without burning out? It's always important to take time for yourself to ensure that you have taken a step back and you're doing well. When I did the long um, hours in general surgery, I remember I would wake up at 4 in the morning, I would drive downtown, um, our round started at 5.30, I would round with the, res the whole team, we would go into OR at about 8, and the physician I was with would sometimes do 12-hour surgeries or sometimes do 20-hour surgeries. We would be in OR till the morning after, or sometimes at night we would do emergency epis or colis. Then we would round on patients the day after, and then I would go home. Door to door, it would be about a 30-hour day sometimes. And I remember feeling exhausted. I remember just not wanting to do anything once I got home, and it felt like a waste of time and effort. And very quickly, the chief resident I was linked up with realized that and he started to tell me that I had to use my day after being on call to recuperate. I had to go home, sleep, I had to eat well. He reminded me to do that because I realized very quickly I wasn't doing that when I was on a 30-hour shift. I remember having to bring five meals because you're really there for five meals. I remember him forcing me to go down with him at 6 a.m. the morning after and having breakfast. So it's the little stuff that really matters. I make it a point to ensure that students who do rotation with me have breakfast and lunch. UHN recently found that the number one cause of falls amongst students from all specialties was hypoglycemia and dehydration. And we very quickly found that all preceptors had to do was take the extra 10 seconds to ensure that their students had drank water, had breakfast, and taken some time to have lunch. It's very difficult when you're a student to feel as if uh, to be in a position where you are intimidated and you can't ask, can I just take 10 minutes to go to the washroom and have a bite to eat? And it's okay to do so. Remember that the rest of us are humans too. We're not going to penalize you for asking the time to do that. And if somebody does penalize you for that, it's not you, it's them. Um, and any advice for Brooke for her moving forward? I think, Brooke, you've done really, really well in this rotation. Um, I don't think I have to keep saying that. You've gone above and beyond my expectations, um, especially as you started with an elective, and I know you didn't have the baseline family or ER or gen surge rotations, which, you know, and these rotations may have helped you a little bit more in oncology. The fact that you put an initiative, showed up early every day, made sure all your dictations were done on time, really speaks volumes to your work ethic. I would make sure that doesn't change about you. If you feel burnt out, because you know there will come a time after a certain, month, a certain amount of months that you'll just feel like you've done too much and you might want to take that day or two, do so. 
Don't allow yourself to feel so burnt out that you lose these excellent characteristics that make you a great PA clerk and eventually will make you a great PA. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm a second year McMaster physician assistant student and I just finished my elective rotation in radiation oncology. So when I commit to something, I want to put 100% of my effort into it, um, especially in uh, an area where the cases are really complex 